Hey everyone, Chris Grandy, chrisgrandy.com, planwithchris.com, walnuthilladvisors.com. I think we have some others, but so far that's that's where we're at. Uh, just wanted to give you a quick video because uh, a few things. I want to update you on some stuff, and also uh, some of you know we're leaving for California tomorrow, and uh, so we'll be gone for a bit. But um, what I wanted you to know was, uh, first off, just so you everybody does know this, our I will be available most days, regular hours. We're three hours behind. I've got a couple of kids that don't like to sleep a lot. So I'll be up. So when you, 9 o'clock in Boston and 6 o'clock in California, typically when I'm out there, I am awake at uh, you know 6 p.m. or earlier. So if you need to reach me, you can get me. Um, clients can always call the cell phone, or if you call my office extension, it forwards to my cell phone. So I should be available most days, regular hours. Just so you know, so um, I have some meetings planned out there. You know, I'll be busy certain days doing different things. Whether uh, I have an investment meetings, I know I've already booked in the middle of June on the 17th. I've got some some clients I need to meet up with, and some uh, some friends and business partners I'll be meeting up with. So I do have a lot of stuff planned out there, but for the most part, I bring my laptop with me, my office is with me wherever I go. So you need to reach me, you reach me. Uh, Lauren, Lauren will be here back at the office if you need to reach her. Extension one. Uh, so uh, just for clients, so you know, we'll be around. So nothing there. So anyway, we're going tomorrow. Pretty exciting. It'll be Kimi's first flight. So she hasn't been on a plane yet. This will be Christian's eighth or, eighth or ninth flight. So he's he's got frequent flyer miles. And uh, so you know, we'll see what happens. First time as a uh, almost a three-year-old, though, flying. So it should be an exciting adventure for him. He's looking forward to it, so he says. So... Next thing I want to let you know, though, is, is when I'm out there, I'm, this time I'm really going to try to shoot some video of where we go and some of the stuff that's around there so you get a feel to see what I see when I go out there. So, Muir Woods, Napa, Sonoma, which are all 10 or 15, 20-minute rides, the natural beauty, the landscape of, of you know that, that, that are, that's around us. San Francisco and Sausalito. Well, Sausalito and, and that cool whole scene in San Francisco with the, 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 all the angles to that city. I'm going to try to share with you some of the stuff that uh, that I see in video. You know, some of the stuff that, that we tend to do and, and such. Maybe I'll try to get a uh, you know some shots of where we got married and, and some of the cute, cool communities and, and neighborhoods such as North Beach and Chinatown and South Beach and uh, and and also uh, uh, the Japantown area and uh, Pacific Heights and Marina and maybe some of the cool quirky places too if, if we get to them. Um, Haight-Ashbury, which we don't usually go to, but it's, it's sort of like Berkeley or the old, looks like the old Harvard Square, you know. Uh, but I want to try to get all that stuff to you, so I will try to share that with you. Also, um, uh, you know, hopefully I'll be able to do that with video. I'm going to be upgrading, you know, how we take video. Hopefully this is the the, the <clears throat> worst quality video I ever do going forward. So this is shot off my uh, off my MacBook. So uh, anyway, uh, next thing I want to talk about is give you a quick market update. You know, some of you have I'm going to do a separate video on the market, but I'm I'm going to make it separate because I know a lot of you uh, didn't like that uh, you were uh, bait and switched where I had a picture of me with the wine bottles. Here's my. Um, scenery here. This is more appropriate now. I am going to California tomorrow, so these wines are actually from um, Napa General Store. They have a wine club where they pick wines from very small vineyards and such, and they send them to me. And, uh, and you know, I, some of my clients that I know that really like wine, I give them to them. If you're not really a wine drinker, I don't give you one of these because, you're number one, I, mean, I wouldn't appreciate it. I am, I am not what they call a sophisticated wine drinker. So, this wouldn't apply to me, but some of you are. Some of you know your wines, and you know the differences, and if you tell me that, if I find that out through conversation, you'll probably get one of these wines. Some of these, I most of these, I, I probably wouldn't even like myself. Some of them I do, because they're so good, even if they're a type of wine that I'm not a fan of, like Merlot or something, or which you know my grandfather likes, I don't really like. Uh, sometimes they taste good because they're such good wines, but typically, you know, I've done tastings, and... <clears throat> Sad to admit, I, I like the cheap wines, probably because they're a little bit sweeter, and I'm not very sophisticated. So that's the cup of wine I get. But these are, this is a proper background now. So 
But I'm going to give you a quick market update because some of you were bait and switch last time. I had the, the picture with the wines, and then I went to that boring market video that, uh, you know, and I know the difference because, you know, a bunch of people watched, you know, my other videos all the way through. That one, you know, maybe 20 or 30 people watched it. It's <laughs> whoa, okay, this is terrible. So I'm going to keep those market videos separate and off to the side like I did the first couple times. It'll be in the you know, the right column market update when I when I do one of those. So I plan to do one soon, but just as a qu uh, quick thoughts, some of the themes that, 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 that I thought would play out a while ago are, are starting to, and, um, you know, I, obviously many of you know, I think that the, the stock rally has gone on a bit too long, and uh, but we've talked about trends in past emails, not video ones, but you've seen me write about that, that they can go on longer than you think, and the trend has persisted, you know, with, with just this fact that, uh, you know, earnings in U.S. companies are down, but the stocks are still finding a way to hang out there. Well, now we have the threat of rates rising. The jobs report was pretty good, even though at least half the jobs are, are you know, low-end healthcare jobs, hotel and, and uh, leisure type jobs. But, you know, not being said, people are still working. And the Fed can't ignore that. So we have rate, you know, people think there's gonna, they're, they're going to start raising rates, and that is not going to be friendly for the global economy, in my opinion. And as, as you know, we've talked about this many times, if those of you who are long-time readers, the game plan goes like this. They pull away the, the punch bowl, the stimulus, the market falls, and economic activity takes a hit, and the Fed, who really have no, in my opinion, no spine, they're going to just, they're going to reverse course. There's a good chance they reverse course and try to stimulate again. So what we'll have is we'll have, um, you know, we'll have the, the markets correct, People get scared. The Fed backpedals. Markets try to go up again. And in my opinion, that rally, when that happens, this is a couple of steps ahead, by the way, when that happens, that will fail. And if that fails, then we're going to have some serious trouble because I think the effect of 0% interest rates for six years, along with $3.6 trillion of monetary stimulus, has been a lot more beneficial for the economy than people realize. And when that's taken away... I don't know what to be on the other side of that. So what we've done in our actively managed portfolios and even in our passive portfolios, number one, we are out of bonds. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't think bonds continue to increase. And with rates at 2 to 3% for long bonds, that's our upside potential return. When your maximum return is 3% and your downside risk is 20%, you don't invest in something like that. But see, for the last couple of years, people have just paying the greater fool. They keep buying bonds, etc. And now what's going to happen is as this thing reverses, and it is reversing right now, they're not going to be able to get out fast enough. And unfortunately, a lot of these bonds are bought by big pensions and such. I think the ramifications could be, I don't know, we'll have to see what happens when it does, could be very ugly. So we are out of bonds, you know, just straight traditional bonds, all the active clients, and even some of the passive clients. We had the PIMCO bond fund, uh, B-O-N-D, up until about a month and a half ago, gone. And so we're out of bonds. We do have some exposure to floating rate bonds. These are bonds that uh, whose uh, interest coupon adjusts upward as rates rise, and, and I think there's a, a decent risk-reward ratio there, but we're out of bonds. Second thing we're doing is our stock exposure is not that big, and if we are exposed, it's in places where there may be some growth. One, um, cybersecurity for our active accounts um, through an exchange-traded fund. Secondly, um, we have exposure to, uh, you know, especially the growth clients. We have exposure to um, rising interest rates through a head, um, through a fund that would profit from that trend. We also, uh, through growth and some um, um, conservative growth clients, have um, options that will increase in value if the market drops. So we have hedges in place. We are um, investing long, meaning we are uh, investing in. Security stocks for the internet, which I feel is an area that no one's going to cut spending on. I mean, if the market drops, they could these stocks could drop like everything else because things tend to. There's a lot of herd behavior on Wall Street, but uh, with growth in the industry expected to be 28 percent this year, and with the government's um, Office of Personal Management just hacked, not really the year a year or two where people are going to cut security spending. In fact, I think they're going to increase it more. So that's a, a trend area I feel very strongly about. Uh, again, if it if it if it crashes with the rest of the market, we'll get out of it. As you know, our our active style we're not we're not hanging around to take the pain. But uh, it, you know, as long as things don't fall apart, security stocks I think offer uh, an excellent opportunity. Secondly, um, you know, we we are in bank stocks now, and the theory behind that is that 
you know, a lot of banks have been very smart about getting rid of their long mortgages. They sell them off to Fannie Mae, et cetera. So the risk that banks had in the past was that when you're holding mortgages at 3% and interest rates rise and you have to pay your depositors 1, 2, 3, 4% on savings accounts as that increases, if you're paying 40 your depositors but you're only earning 3 on a mortgage, you're losing money. So that killed banks in the past when rates rose. This time around, banks are just selling those mortgages off to Fannie Mae, so the government will be the one that explodes and loses all the money when this happens, which uh, you know banks are happy with. So the banks are servicing the mortgages, collecting a service fee, but they're not going to take the interest rate hit. In addition, though, as rates rise, new they can issue new loans, especially shorter term and, and maybe some business loans that are shorter term at higher rates. In the meantime, um, short-term um, short rates are still zero, so they're going to be able to lend money at higher and higher interest rates for a period of time now while their borrowing costs, those short-term rates, are still zero. So their spread could increase. They're going to be making more money off the loans as interest rates increase. So they'll still be giving, in other words, they'll still be giving you zero to a quarter percent on your checking account, but now they're going to be charging you four or four and a half on a mortgage instead of three and a half, and that's enormous profit um, expansion. So we could see that. So we're, you know, that may or may not work, and banks may get into trouble in some other way, but for the most part, that's, uh, that's another area that we are, we're investing in. And we're also, um, we have some select global exposure, because I think U.S. stocks have definitely tapped out, you know, 28, 30 times earnings for a company that is uh, not growing, is facing currency headwinds as the U.S. dollar gets, you know, increases in value, makes our imports more, our exports more expensive. So the, you know, for your, for your non-growth U.S. stocks that people only bought because they pay a 2% dividend, I, I'm worried about them too, especially some in um, old tech. And we do have some um, some options uh, betting against old technology stocks as uh, some cycles really come to an end and people are a little too excited about the prospects of these stocks. And that's another hedge that we have. So, you know, we're, we're long banks and security stocks and some global stocks and we've got hedges um, you know, short using um, old line technology and retail, and we also have um, um, hedges with interest rates. Which I don't think it's just a hedge. I do think that's a nice long term trend that if we can catch it, will be pretty good. So that's a, a three minute portfolio summary as to where we stand. The conservative clients and uh, and some of our retirement clients are still in their allocated portfolios, but there may, we may come to a point where we need to remove those because they have bond exposure, <clears throat> just to strip out the bond exposure. We've had a 30-year bull market in bonds. We could easily have a 5- to 10-year bear market in bonds, which means you're just not going to want to own them um, generically, so to speak. So anyway, that's my market update for those of you curious. Um, what else? i got my little notes here. So in other words, we will be available. We will. Be, so feel free to call. I'll still be working. We'll be looking at this stuff. I'll be following these trends. There's also some other um, interesting things going on. One... Um, one thing I will share too is is something I've been uh, writing a lot about lately. Something you know you know that we act as a sounding board, especially our clients. One of the benefits of being a client is you have a, a you, know, you know a mom or a kid or a friend who needs help. We're a sounding board. That's a free benefit, and a lot of you have taken advantage of that. You've had your kids or your your mom come see us or a friend, and uh, you know and if, and if and you know we do not need to 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 charge every person that comes with us. So we've helped a lot of people for free, so you know we're there. One of the things I'm telling people, as we get near the top of this bull market, and which I think it is, and a lot of people have 401k plans with large American companies, and a lot of clients and other people I run into have a significant chunk of their 401k money in the company stock of the, of the company they work for. And they might have bought that stock for, on average, $10 a share, and it might be worth 50 or 60 if you're in that position, there is a special IRS uh, rule which would allow you to take company stock out of the kind of pluck it out of your 401k at a, at a significant tax advantage. So if you or someone you know is in that position, let me know. I want to talk to them. It's it's a uh, it's a nuanced um, tax rule. It only benefits people in these circumstances. Typically, someone with a lot of savings. So most of the time. This is not something you're going to see on the on the nightly news because it it's not something that affects everybody. It affects people who earn typically earn higher income and work for large corporations who are able to accumulate a lot of money in their 401k. This could significantly may be a five or potentially six figure ben tax benefit if people follow this rule. So if you or know you know somebody that is in that situation, let me know. Also, the second thing I want to let you all know about for those of you that do work in companies that allow this. 
um, if I haven't mentioned this to you as a client, if you are able, and check with your HR department, if you are able to contribute to your 401k over and above the deductible limit, okay, so if you can put in more than 18000 or more than 23000 as a someone over age 50 into your plan, and you have the income level where you can do this, let me know. I'm going to tell you about an interesting Roth strategy that would benefit you too. Uh, again, this is another strategy that you need to be making some decent money to take advantage of and uh, be able to save a significant money also to do it. But if you can, you need to call me, or if you know somebody in that situation, call me. There's a significant tax break that uh, the government would like to get rid of, I think, but the IRS just ruled on it last year that said this is okay to do. Uh, great Roth strategy. I'll fill you in. Or email me or call me. I'll let you know. I wrote an article about it. I'll show you the link. So, um, well, I'm going to write an article about that one. I have a handout for that. I'll share that with you if uh, if you let me know. Other than that, just remember we will be available. I'm going to show you the places I go, and maybe I'll be doing my my uh, email updates from some of these great locations. I'll shoot a video from Mirror Woods or something. Uh, so you'll be getting you know uh, really good um, excuse me financial information. Uh, Right from Muir Woods, you know, just a historic, beautiful redwood forest. Or oh, we'll do it from Napa. I'll sit, I'll sit on a veranda in Napa just to rub it in. As many of you know, I think you should come out and visit me when I'm out there. We can go to Napa together. We can go to a restaurant together. We can go to Sonoma. We can go with the kids. You can watch my kids for the day if you like. I'd love to have you. <laughs> um, so, uh, but please uh, contact me. I'll keep you guys posted. You'll know what's going on. And if there's anything else I can do for you, let me know. Uh, I would definitely. Um, Love to hear from you, and I will be, be working just like I am right now, except I'll be out there. So call me if you need me, email me if you need me, contact Lauren if you need if you need to talk to her. And uh, when I get back, <clears throat> it was likely uh, probably mid July. I will, uh, you know, we'll resume our, our regular meetings with clients. So uh, look forward to seeing you guys. I would love to hear from you, and uh, hope you're all doing well. You'll be hearing from me soon, hopefully with some really cool backdrops. Have a great day, guys. Talk to you soon.